Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a drama thriller films from 2015, titled Intruders. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film opens with our protagonist, Anna, who is the sole caretaker of her brother, Conrad, who is dying from pancreatic cancer. One day, without Anna's consent, Conrad hires a lawyer named Charlotte, to help them sort out Conrad's last will and testament, because he doesn't have much time left. He made all the arrangements and she just needs to sign it. Charlotte wants to help Conrad as he wishes Anna to be taken care of, and tries to convince Anna by accepting the truth, but Anna refuses to sign them. After the lawyer leaves, we see Anna and Conrad embracing each other, and as part of his last words, he tells her that she is strong now and she can't stay locked up forever. He also tells Anna that she has to get out and be the part of the world, and she should forgive their dad for what he's done in the past. However, the stubborn Anna refuses to even consider forgiving her father, so she storms out of the room. Later that night, Conrad passes away in his sleep, leaving Anna completely alone in the house, trying to cope with her grief. After Conrad's body gets taken away, later that day, Dan, who is their usual catering delivery guy shows up to deliver some food. Anna invites him in, and he comforts her a little through her grief. Dan opens up about wanting to leave this town, but not having enough money to do so, which prompts Anna to hand him a bag of cash. Anna claims that she has more money than she knows what to do with now that her brother is gone. Dan politely declines this offer. In the next scene, Anna gets ready to attend Conrad's funeral, however, she can't seem to bring herself to go outside, while Conrad's lawyer is calling multiple time on her landline as she was expecting Anna at the funeral. Instead, she decides to boil some water, presumably to make some tea. Not long after, a car pulls up into her driveway, and three menacing-looking men exit it. Scared, Anna moves to hide under the kitchen table. The three men break into her house, and begin going through the rooms in search of something. All of the sudden, the kettle on the stove whistles as the water boils, drawing the men's attention. Anna then realizes that she has to hide someplace else, so she exits the kitchen and makes her way upstairs, shortly before the men enter the kitchen. Seeing the boiling kettle, the men realize that Anna must be in the house, so they decide to cut the phone lines to make sure she doesn't call for help, and begin to search for her. One of the men, whose name is Perry, decides to investigate upstairs, and finally finds her which sends Anna running right to the front door. But her anxiety strikes again, so she decides to stop just before she makes it outside. The intruders, of course, get shocked to see this. The three men decide to sit her down, and their leader, JP, starts questioning her about where she keeps her money. Perry who is cruel and impatient suggests that they should kill her, and burn the house down once they're finished, even going as far as bringing a can of gasoline inside the house. But Vance, the normal one, is strongly against it and tells him they should leave. JP and Vance then proceed to leave Anna under Perry's watch, while they go search for the money. Meanwhile, the low-key sociopathic Perry begins to question Anna about how ridiculous it was of her to stop shortly by the door earlier. Here is the point where we learn that Anna has agoraphobia, which is a phobia of the outside world. Hence, she has not left her home in the past 10 years since her father died. Knowing this, Perry decides to be a dick about this, and forcefully drags her to the front porch, prompting Anna to go on a spiral. Hey. JP interrupts them and grabs hold of Anna. During this time, she suddenly pisses herself. JP tries asking her where the money is, but Anna who is clearly having a mental breakdown can't seem to speak. They take her back inside and this time, JP asks his brother Vance to watch Anna, because of how much of a dick Perry is. Vance then hands Anna a pair of clean sweatpants, and asks her to change, but she doesn't budge. Meanwhile, JP and Vance start exploring the basement, and come across multiple doors, one of which doesn't have a handle. Instead of changing, Anna tries speaking to Vance, telling him that he's unlike the other two intruders. This angers Vance, and he starts coming at her, telling her that the whole thing is his idea and they will not leave her. Right at that moment, Dan the catering guy storms in, and pulls Vance away. But surprisingly, Vance calls Dan's name, and they clearly know each other. Anna who is taken aback by this runs out of the room to hide. The commotion draws JP and Perry's attention, so they huddle in the living room, and discover that Vance has lost Anna. Perry and Vance decide to look for Anna, while JP ties Dan up in the living room. 
Impatient, Perry takes out Anna's parakeet, and threatens to kill it to get Anna's attention. However, Anna does not come out of hiding, so Perry kills the poor little bird, before joining JP and Dan in the living room. Anna runs and hides in the bathroom, and it is Vance who ends up finding her. She freaks out, and accidentally stabs him in the throat, killing him. Anna then drags Vance's dead body to the basement. JP and Perry who thought Vance could handle the woman, rush downstairs and realize they were wrong when they discover a dead Vance. In the basement, they come across Anna, who escapes through a door and simply vanishes out of their sight. We then see that Anna has successfully made her way back upstairs. She pulls a suspicious lever that retracts the basement stairs into the walls, trapping the intruders in the basement. We clearly see now that the tables have turned. Anna then walks up to the tied up Dan, and sits down with him. She gets furious that they tried to rob her during Conrad's funeral and asks him to explain himself. Dan reveals that he is friends with Vance but not the other guys. Apparently, he told Vance about how Anna is now alone and that she offered him a lot of money, but never thought Vance would try to rob Anna. Hearing this, Anna is livid. She cruelly breaks Dan's finger, then drags him to the basement door. She proceeds to tell him that none of this would have happened if he had just taken the money, and does this. Right after, Anna moves to a room where she can surveil the basement, and watches Dan and the intruders. In the basement, we learn that Dan's kneecap is dislocated, so one of the guys helps to realign it. Afterwards, Anna opens the basement door and tells them that there is a first aid kit in the other room. Perry who is frustrated smashes Dan's leg. JP, however, tries to be diplomatic, so he enters what looks like a tidy kid's room, but then the door shuts behind him. This is because Anna has a special controller that controls everything in the basement. Perry who refuses to be stuck here starts slamming himself against a door, and manages to break through it. He finds an empty hallway, along with a room with a noose. He also discovers that this room is right next to the room where JP is. Then all of the sudden, the lights in the hallway go out. Curious, Perry walks back into the hallway. And then, lights turn on again, and he discovers a hole in the wall. He looks inside it, and finds a set of stairs going up. However, when he's about to alert JP about this, Anna sneaks up behind him and hits him in the head with a hammer. They end up scuffling, and he manages to pin her down and begins choking her. But because of his recent head wound, his grip weakens and he bleeds to death, before he gets to kill Anna. Soon after, Conrad's lawyer, Anna? Charlotte, enters the house to check on Anna. She asks why Dan's car is outside. Meanwhile in the basement, Dan goes to check on Perry but instead finds a cooler. Upon opening it, he startles to find a frozen dead body. Upstairs, Anna picks up a knife, ready to strike Charlotte. While at the same time, Dan finds the hole in the wall, and begins going up the stairs and knocks on the ceiling at the end of the staircase. The knocking noises don't go unnoticed by Charlotte, but Anna is quick to convince Charlotte that the noise is simply coming from the house's radiator. Charlotte doesn't question it and leaves. Up next, Anna decides to descend to basement. She finds Dan and picks him up, before locking him inside a small closet. She then goes to another room, where we learn that there is a one-way mirror behind a painting that allows her to watch JP, Anna takes out her special controller and the wardrobe doors open, sending Dan tumbling out of it. JP who is now suspicious that Anna is watching them through the mirror tries breaking the glass, but then Anna starts speaking through a speaker, saying that the glass is bulletproof. She proceeds to tell JP to put on a shirt inside the drawer. JP begrudgingly puts it on, and then, because he has nothing left to do, tries coming up with possible theories as to why she has these creepy rooms inside her house and theorizes that Conrad, her late brother, was a psycho. He tells her they lured the victims there, and Conrad killed them while she could watch and talk to them. JP's words trigger Anna, who refuses to take the slander, and proceeds to pass a folder through an opening. She explains that she and Conrad used to kidnap only pedophiles to teach them a lesson, because their late father was a pedophile who used to abuse Anna when she was younger until one day, Conrad murdered him. And since then she stopped leaving the house. Hearing this, JP becomes sarcastic, and triggers her anxiety by saying things her dad did to her, and her brother is sick and enjoys killing people. She tells him to shut up and starts crying, while Dan also tells him to stop. Anna then reveals that there is a revolver in the room, 
and asks Dan to kill JP with the promise that she would let Dan out if he does. But Dan who is too kind for his own good refuses too. JP who hears this pushes Dan and then takes the gun himself. Anna begins to encourage him to repent for being a thief, and we see JP start crying. When it seems like he is buying her words, he aims the gun for his head. But then, JP reveals that he's only bluffing and starts laughing. Instead, he threatens to kill Dan if Anna doesn't let them out. Anna doesn't want him to die, so she releases them. JP and Dan make it outside the house with Vance's dead body, but JP is now vengeful because Anna killed his brother. Instead of running away, he decides to pour gasoline all over the house. Anna finally hands him the money to convince him not to burn the house, but JP doesn't care about the money anymore because his brother is dead. They then scuffle, before Anna manages to get away and runs upstairs. Blinded by rage, JP goes after her and pins her down the bed. Like a sicko, he expresses that he'd like to do those things like her dad before killing her. But luckily, Dan walks in and tells him to stop. With JP distracted, Anna takes the opportunity to snatch the revolver away from JP and shoots him dead. She and Dan then walk back downstairs in silence, and she sits on a chair and doesn't say a word. They both share a look and Dan leaves by closing the door. And then for some reason, she decides that she no longer has agoraphobia, and sets her house on fire herself along with its secrets. Anna then walks away from the burning house to live the life her brother wanted. This is where the movie ends. Okay guys. That's all the recap of Intruders 2015. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.